Welcome to the Artist Academy podcast. I'm your host, Andrea Earhart, and we are starting a brand new series called Quit Your Day Job, where we are highlighting members of the Artist Academy who have recently transitioned from quitting their nine to five and are now into full-time creativity. They are living the dream. Today, we are high... Yeah. Today we are highlighting Lissa Wynn, a Florida-based artist who joined the Academy when I first opened the doors over two years ago. I have a special place in my heart for Lissa because we've grown together and I've watched her transform her life from building an art business and just so many things. This, this interview is full of a lot of emotion and just very realness, talks about money, talks about life and... I think you're just really going to love it. And that's all the introduction I think it needs. I think I know you're going to love it, but let me know what you think about this week's episode with Lissa Wynn. You could start off by just telling people a little bit about yourself and where you are, what you do, and yeah. we'll get into the whole nitty gritty details. Okay. Yeah. So my name is Lissa Wynn. My last name is Bowen, but I professionally go by Lissa Wynn, which is my middle name. And I am located on the east coast of Florida in Brevard County, which is also called the Space Coast. So I live 15 minutes away from Kennedy Space Center and NASA. And when I'm not painting, I get to watch rockets launch from my backyard. So <laughs> it's really nice. Like we float in the pool and get to watch them go up. And we have this thing that even if we don't know if the launch is happening, we can hear the house rumbling and everybody shouts rocket launch and we all run outside and it's like a thing. That I is so it. cool. I had no <laughs> idea. That's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> if we do a meetup down here, I'm going to make everybody go to Kennedy Space Center, like the same way we went to the Wildlife Museum, because I think it'll be a lot of fun. It's also super, super inspiring to go there, and it makes you feel like this big, just really tiny and insignificant. Putting it on the to-do list. <laughs> so I have been painting for many, many years, obviously, and I'm self-taught. I didn't go to school for any, it literally was just hours and hours of practice. And they say that you have to have like 10,000 hours of something before you can call yourself like good at it. And I actually sat down and like looked at that the other day and I was like, oh, I think I'm way past that. <laughs> <laughs> like I paint at least a couple hours every single day, more often, and you probably like an average of eight. And we'll say we're conservative about it. And we say 300 days a year. That's a lot. And I know I don't take 65 days off throughout the year. We take five. <laughs> yeah, it just, uh, that's it. Located in Florida. I, paint. I do murals. <laughs> I paint on canvas. My mom would tell you that I paint on anything if it moves slow enough. I'll just tackle it. Like, oh, like a turtle. <laughs> <laughs> There's not really anything that I haven't painted on except cars yet, except that my hood started to chip recently. And Nick, my partner was like, oh, maybe we'll, you should just go get it painted. And I was like, or I can buy some one shot and I can paint it myself. Yeah. Because obviously I need a big sea turtle on the front of my car. <laughs> Oh my gosh, that would be the best thing. Yeah, so you're known for sea turtles and like a bunch of Florida, Floridian yeah. arts. And yeah, I remember one yeah. of the first times when we opened the academy and we were in there and you were painting on the beach. And I remember you were the, one of the first people to ever go live in the Artist Academy advanced group. You were painting on the beach and I was like, that is so cool. I'm so <laughs> Definitely my favorite, but I, really one that I can only do like early in the morning or not in the summertime just because it's so busy at the beach and then it's so hot like I don't want to sit there and paint I want to lay in the water like a whale <laughs> yeah exactly. so I'm known for my sea turtles and if people who listen to this later won't hear it, but there's some behind me I just finished that big beast of a painting and I was so oh. excited to do it oh. and I haven't posted it yet but I did take really cute, like, matching outfit pictures with it, inspired by you. No way. Oh, that's <laughs> yeah. amazing. I yeah. love that because I'm actually currently getting so much hate from this, like, art group. <laughs> yeah. I'm, like, looking at the comments today. I'm just like, oh, okay. And people are just like, well, you shouldn't stand next to your stuff. It, it distracts. And this is all this stuff. And I'm just like, okay. But I love that you're doing it, too. Like, yeah. It's, it's fun. <laughs> No, it absolutely, it is. I saw that and you talking about that and all of the people saying, oh, you should be with your paint clothes. I'm like, yeah, we post those too, but every once in a while, look, my painting's pretty and also so am I. 
like and we're complimenting each other and it's for marketing it's not like you go out there and yeah you know that's stupid people are dumb but no I had we went out and the outfit that I put on actually happened to match it like really really well and so I was like we can't leave yet we have to do a photo shoot and Nick was like I thought you wanted to go to lunch and I'm like yeah 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 in a minute take my picture <laughs> Instagram husband oh I love yeah. that <laughs> so awesome. um and I got the idea from it because I posted a, like an in progress picture of it the other day and I had these like tropical pants on and it, everybody was like, oh, you match your painting. Oh, you match your painting. And I was like, oh, whoops, I guess that's good. But it's this big thing I wanted to do for as much as I'm known as for sea turtles and my ocean work, I'm somehow, I don't know how this happened, but I became the hibiscus girl as well. So I keep getting hired to come paint these larger than life tropical flowers and bright colored leaves, which is great because then I get to use a ton of hot pink, which makes me very happy. Like hot pink and bright teal and like pops of yellow. If I could just paint with those three colors for the rest of my life, I would be so, so happy. <laughs> and then I was like, I wanted to combine both of them. So I came home and I did it. And I had this huge like four foot by five foot canvas that was just like in the way. So now I put paint on it and now it's just art that's in the way instead of an empty. Canvas. Yeah. But yeah, that's it. I paint light, I paint water, I paint turtles, I paint flowers. I like colors. Yeah. Yeah. And you're doing it. So just to brag on you real quick. So you were one of the first artists in the artist Academy. And I just remember from the beginning, I like, telling Ryan, I'm like, this girl is really gonna be something like I can, you can just tell because you would show up for all the stuff. And just be like, <laughs> it was just you, I just knew who you were. And I was like, okay, yeah. And just watching you go along and like, you, you would go out and pitch yourself and you would just do you were doing all the things. And so oh, I just yeah. wanted to to say that because it does require a yeah. lot of work. I think, yeah, I think a lot of people think that it should come to them and things just happen and oh, like no. somewhat oh. put it out there, people will come, but like you really went out and you got the yep. work and you got, you joined Thumbtack and you did all the things that we'll, we'll yep. talk about. And now you had a couple five figure months, you know, mm -hmm. $10,000 months, yes. which is insane. <laughs> like, which is so, like the goal. That's crazy. I love that, that I joined the Academy when I did. And for people who don't know who I am and haven't followed me, when I joined the Academy, I was very much in a broken emotional state, had just gone through domestic violence. So I was a single mom and there was no other income. It was only me. I was like, I have to get a real job and I'm not going to be able to do my art anymore. Except that nobody would hire me because I hadn't had a real job in a decade. And so I was like, fine, then I'm just going to do this art thing. And then you started the Academy Advanced and I was like, this is perfect. It's like the perfect thing to hold me accountable and make me do the thing. And I really did. I showed up to every single thing, even if it was at like 930 at night or six o'clock in the morning or whatever time I was on every live active in every conversation. I ate up everything you had actually in my filing cabinet. I have an Academy folder that has all of the things like printed out oh. and I still refer back to it every once in a while to be like, wait, why am I struggling with this? And you have, you do have to do the work. It doesn't just fall into your lap. Like, you have to put in the long hours. You have to make sacrifices to your social life and stuff the more that you want it to come. And obviously being a mom, there's only so many sacrifices to my time that I can make without, you know, compromising their quality of life. And I know that there were times where you're like, you go here and pitch yourself. And I was just like, that sounds terrible. And I remember the first time I did it, it was the worst because I'm not like most artists. We're all introverted except for when we're around each other because you're with your <laughs> like-minded people. And I went to go pitch myself to this restaurant about displaying my extra paintings. And they were across the street from a bar. And I remember going to the bar, into the bar first and sitting and just like ordering a shot of tequila and then having it and then brushing my teeth and then going across and being like, that was great. And the whole time I knew my face was red, my chest was red. I was sweating like just everywhere and I'm like hi hi do you want to maybe show my art I think it's good you might think it's good and they were like and I was like wait what it's that simple <laughs> <laughs> and it was so easy other than my nerves for it I did that again and again and now I've been doing that for a couple of years and I still anytime I have to go pitch myself to somebody I get all sweaty and gross and I'm like mm. is there a way to do this like I would like to make a robot liaison of myself and the robot goes and does all the hard work that I don't want to, but it's all part of it. You can't really pick and choose what you do. You gotta, you gotta do it all. But yeah, yeah it's a lot of, <laughs> 
just continuous action and perseverance and pushing forward. And you have to just be okay with the fact that it's going to take some time. It's going to take time. It took me two and a half years to get to where I am now. And before that, I had been full time for two years, but with the assistance of somebody else's income. So it wasn't the pressure wasn't there, but I went full time in October of 2017, meaning I quit my like four other part time jobs and was like, I'm going to start doing art shows. So that means I can't work on the weekends and I can't be here. And I've been doing art shows. I need paintings and I need inventory and all this stuff. So I did all of, I did all of that for a while. And then in January of 2019, when I went full time, full time, I was just like, okay, I'll just do it. It'll be fine. And I remember there was a week in November where I had, I did not have enough money to pay my bills coming up December 1st. And I just went and was basically like, do you want me to paint your windows? I'll paint your windows. I'll paint your window for whatever. What, what, $100? Great. Let's paint your windows. And I just went all over the place for five days and managed to make all of the money that I needed just from doing window painting because I basically was like, you have to. You don't have another choice. Like, you, you have to put yourself out there. You have to get these jobs. I would do this weird shake myself off in the car thing and then hop out, plaster on my smile muster every ounce of confidence that I had and then just do it because once I have a paintbrush in my hand and I'm putting paint on something that's I never feel more confident than I do in that moment I know exactly what I'm doing and exactly how to do it and so I just zone out and there's a lot of people I think that when they approach you and they see that just harness that feeling and it's easy to I don't know I feel like Madeline would be like to pour it on yourself <laughs> coat yourself in it you just have to embrace that moment where you feel in that moment so that you can keep going. But yeah. yeah, it was really exciting that I was like, oh, wow, I may actually be able to do this. And then I have. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I, I feel like I remember that whenever I remember talking to you whenever you were like, okay, so like my, it, it's like your washer broke or something. I, I mm -hmm. remember and you were like, what? I was like, I don't know. Maybe, like, let's, you know. And we were like going through the fourth quarter thing. Yeah, brainstorm. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah, we were going through the fourth quarter success plan thing. I remember you going out and be like, and then I got one and the, uh, the neighbor next door wanted a, a window painting and you did it. And I was like, yeah. Oh. Like, oh. And I just, yep. you just, I you feel for you. And I'm just like, she is going to make it. I just knew like you were going to make it. And yep. it's just a matter of time. And so yep. anybody listening, if you're in that hard space, and I think we all go through the hard space, whether you're like, working a full-time job and making the art and there's just no free time and you're giving up the social life, like you said, or there's just no art coming in at all. And you have to figure it out like that. Yep. Sometimes that pressure is a blessing because it is. yeah, if you had someone just giving you all the things and you wouldn't be out hustling and then through the hustling, you meet other customers and it's yep. just, that's how it goes. So yeah. I just, I think you've that everything you're saying, I was like, just keep talking. This is great. <laughs> <laughs> I did that. And then you mentioned earlier, yeah, I joined Thumbtack. I get a good chunk of my mural jobs from Thumbtack, but there's this really cool thing that's been happening lately where I'm getting less from Thumbtack and more from Instagram and word of mouth and just people contacting me through my website, which when I get contacted through my website, it's hilarious because I haven't updated that thing. It doesn't even have any of my murals on it because I'm such an anti-tech person. I'm like, uh -huh. Like I have it so that if people ask, I'm like, yeah, I have one. And they're like, oh, can I see your work there? And I'm like, absolutely not. <laughs> <laughs> you can see my work on Instagram. But no, I get contacted through Instagram regularly now and just directly through my email and then word of mouth. And then I've made enough of a following in my area that a lot of it is somebody goes, oh, hey, does anybody know of a muralist? And I'll have 20 people and a bunch of them former customers who are like, this girl, you want her. Here's her information. This is how you find her. And this is how much she costs. And blah, 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 blah. Like, they do most of the work for me now at this point, which is really great. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you've, you've gotten know. over mm -hmm. that hump. You're like building up and up and up. And then you're getting at that hump. And then things are just easier, you know? Yeah. And it, it is, it's nice. And it was actually really cool because I did have two, two $10,000 months. And then I took July off 
but not really <laughs> quotes yeah <laughs> that we all have a free day <laughs> like I tried I think the closest I really got to being off was when I was at your house um <laughs> and then we were still painting so it doesn't really count <laughs> but even that month I still made pretty good money for being off and then this this month was really funny because I sat down and I'm like actually taking time off because we're leaving to go to Key West on Friday and we're staying for a whole week and I like have away messages and stuff that are like I'll get back to you on September 3rd and blah, blah, blah. and like I've never been able to do that before in my life so I think that's really cool and the reason I can do that was because I sat there and I blew past ten thousand dollars in one month and I was like <laughs> I had to double check it and do the math again. And I was like, oh my gosh, that you can make that. <laughs> <laughs> and and uh, Nick had a moment the other day that he was telling a friend about it. He was like, I'm so proud of her because I like poked my head around the corner into the room to tell him. I'm like, oh, so my job for today, like rescheduled for next month. We just, some stuff came up and everything and he was like oh that sucks and I was like yeah it's I'm not making this money now and he was like okay but I was like but I'll have it next month and he's like okay and I was like that's really sad about it like in the most obnoxious way possible I was like it means that I'm only having a $15,000 a month and he was like <laughs> what <laughs> and I was like yeah yeah and I know like we've talked about this and it, it's when it comes from when you grew up not without that financial access. It's really surreal to have it around and actually think that this year I might be able to consider myself, and it's so funny, I might actually be able to consider myself 100% successful this year because my mark for financial success and making money with my artwork was never about buying a new car or buying a house or going on a trip or doing any of these things, but because I was one of those really poor kids growing up, I want to buy the angel tags from the Christmas tree. And I think most people know they tend to do them everywhere, but it's like a Christmas tree that's in the grocery stores or Walmart. Or sometimes it's in the schools and they have little tags on them for a five-year-old girl wears this size clothes, this size shoe, wants unicorns and a bike and something else. I always get one or two of those every year anyway. Um, but I want to be able to go get the whole tree and just be... Santa. <laughs> I just want to be Santa and I just want to give all of those kids everything that they could ever want because I don't need that money. Like at that point, it's superfluous. It's money that you would spend otherwise in other places. And at that time, I would really, the thing that would make me the happiest is spending that money to make lots and lots of children very, very happy and parents because I've also been the parent who couldn't really provide a, a holiday for their kids. So I think I might actually get to do that this year. And I'm very excited about it. <laughs> oh my gosh. That's crazy. Wow. Yeah. Wow. That's, so, that's, it. that's amazing. How many kids are on a tree? Like 10, um, 20? I don't know. It depends. It depends on how big the tree is and where it's located. But it's decorated like a normal Christmas tree. And then instead of ornaments, singular ornaments, it's mm. the tag. So they have like, the garlands and the regular ball ornaments. And then instead of like angels or whatever, then they have those little tags. And often they're shaped like little angels. But I don't know, maybe like 25? That's crazy. Oh like, my gosh, that's like, awesome. I don't know. I just, <laughs> but that, <laughs> I'm like, that's the best way to do that is to pay it forward and everything, which is how I feel about the job I'm doing right now, which is like yeah. the thing I'm most excited to talk about. I am actually working with Make-A-Wish this week. And doing a make a wish makeover for a kid. Oh. That's what I'm. That's what I'm doing is um, driving an hour and a half south every day to go completely make over this girl's room, and I want to like, cry about it every time I think about it because that's insane. That's you know where my life has brought me is the fact that I get to make a sweet girl's dream come true. Like. It's so sweet. And, and that too, that came through Instagram. People, they just found me through Instagram. I wish I knew which hashtag or who sent them to me or what, but it's a really, really special thing to be able to do that. And it's fun because it's also, it's not a painting that I normally do. So 
there's no water and there's no sunlight and there's no sea turtles in it. It's um, all Tiana themed. So to have, I was like figuring out how to give her a Tiana room without angering the giant mouse. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah, that's amazing. And that's so awesome because, you know, I tried to break it down. Like murals are so lucrative that I mean, you get paid a hundred bucks an hour and so to, to provide a whole Christmas for a kid, you work an hour and that's mm -hmm. a kid. And so yeah. just thinking of it in terms like that, and I totally get how you want to give back and all that. I get really the artist Academy is my way of, let me help you. Let's, yes. let's build a better life. Yes. <laughs> and I, I totally get it. I love so much that you started the Academy on both levels, the advanced and the regular, because that's always what I wanted to do too, is at some point open a gallery that has my own work in it or whatever. But mostly I wanted to have it be an easy access door opening for artists that maybe didn't want to go into the mural side of things, but wanted to go into the fine art side of things. And there's too often that you encounter artists that are snooty fatooty and don't want to share their stuff because they look at you like competition. And I always think that's so frustrating because I'm like, your style is different from my style. The people who want to buy your stuff probably don't want my stuff. So I'm not your competition. And how does helping me get up the ladder, how does that damage you? You don't need to throw your insecurity feces at me. That's rude. <laughs> don't do that. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, yeah, that would be so cool if I could see that happening in your future. I'd be like, I have a gallery and only new artists are allowed. <laughs> you know? Yes, undiscovered. If you've been featured anywhere else, you can't be here. Go away. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you've already made it. You know, and even to the point that like not taking huge, huge commissions from them and stuff and just coaching them on how to get in, how to get through it. Because I think one of the things that people don't really talk about is that when you go into those big fancy galleries that like, artists are hanging their work there and it's 30,000 plus dollars for a painting. The artist only gets like 12 of that. Mm. Like most of that goes to the commission to the gallery. And I don't, I don't really like that. It's like, yeah, you're doing the work to sell it and everything, but I did the work to create it. And I think that the artists should get more recognition from it in the end and get their own pat on the back and feel like they should be, be able to go out and see the world and succeed and I just would like to be able to give them the same kind of stepping stones that you've given to all of us because and it's where I'm going to have this moment where I can confidently say to anybody who hasn't joined the Artist Academy or if you're thinking about it like I would not this might make you cry and I'm sorry in advance <laughs> I would not be I would not be where I am right now making that kind of money and being able to buy Christmas gifts for tons of children without you Andrea like oh. <laughs> without your help and guidance and your constant check-ins and everything and even when you take the time to celebrate each and every one of our successes like all of that is necessary and I really honestly cannot can say I, I do not think that I would be here without you Please. Oh, this is not where I would be right now. I'll just cry to so myself thank you. inside. <laughs> thank you. So thank uh, you. <laughs> thanks. On a day where I'm getting so much hate online, I needed that today. Yeah, well, oh, so no. thanks. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> thanks. Oh, they know what they're talking about, and they're just mad that they didn't find you sooner and help them yeah. and whatever. Yeah. I'm so glad that we got brought together, and that I just I'm just so proud of you. Like it's just so fun, <laughs> and I you. so I use you as an example all the time. I'm like, yeah, Lisa, she's in Florida and she started from this and now she has this. I use you as an example all the time. And oh, was, yeah, <laughs> yeah, because it's just, I think if you're willing to put in the hard work, then you can do it. And if you re you're willing to put in the hard work to have the skill too, and you mm -hmm. put in the hours in the studio too, you're not just going out there and, you know, pitching yourself. You, you have the hours in the studio, which just helps. And it's just a combination of those two. It's just, and you're on fire. Yeah. So. And I've tried so many things too, to find, sometimes you try a thing and it doesn't work and it falls on its face and you just, you take a couple seconds to be like, ah, dang, that didn't work out well. And, but then you just get up and you move along and you try the next thing. And you keep doing that until you find the things that work. And then you take those things and you hold on to them and then eventually expand upon them. And everything grows from there. But you can't get anywhere if you don't move. <laughs> <laughs> true. <laughs> Very true. Oh my gosh. Okay. Hey there. The show's not over yet. 
But if you're enjoying this episode so far and getting inspired and soaking up all the business tips, then I want to invite you to this brand new thing we just created, the Artist Academy Advanced Podcast. Yep, it's a podcast just like this one, but better. It's one where I don't hold anything back and give you all of the tips to growing an audience, gaining more customers, making money, murals, all the things. So what I've done is I've turned almost all of the weekly Artist Academy advanced membership content from almost three years of exclusive weekly lessons and put them into easily digestible audio format via a podcast for our members. You can plug in while you paint and 90% of the content is juicy solo episodes where I break down exactly how I make money with murals and prints and literally everything. I'm an open book in this. It's there just waiting for you to dive in. So just go to artistacademy.co. That's artistacademy.co to apply and uplevel your art business. It's time. So do you have, yeah, that's, I was about to say, do you have some advice for artists who are maybe in your shoes, like who were, or your, what the shoes you were in, in the very beginning and how they're trying to mm. do transition. you have any advice for them um, other than yeah. already the great stuff you've already said? <laughs> <laughs> I would say where I was in 2017, just jump, just do it. Just rip it off like a band-aid. Just do it. It's <laughs> Nike or whatever. There's no time is going to be perfect. There's always going to be obstacles. Something is always going to scare you or make you feel insecure. And you just have to grab all that up and do it. I always like to bring it back to, I don't know if anybody's seen Happy Feet, but I love that movie because I think penguins are adorable. But there's the, I forget his name, but he's one of the penguins played by late Robin Williams. And everybody's going down to slide down the mountain on their stomachs. And he's like, scared so he walks up to the edge and he's oh no and then he tricks himself and he turns around and he goes oh what's that and then he just falls down the mountain I'm like that's you just fall down the mountain <laughs> just, just do it <laughs> yeah. yeah yeah you're gonna get bumps and bruised but you're gonna have an awesome time and yeah. so just do it and then if you're a single parent or you are a parent and you're trying to figure out how to become a full-time artist again you just have to do it but you have to be incredibly self-disciplined and you have to give some stuff up, whether that means time out with your friends or time by yourself or time when you're sleeping. Cause obviously none of us are going to give up time with our kids to do anything like that. So I would just get up early and I would stay up late and I just basically didn't sleep like ever. And then again, just keep, you just do it. There's like I said, there's never going to be a time that everything is going to fall into place and make it seem like now is the time. Now it's perfect. The sun is shining and the wind is blowing from the west and all my bills are paid. And I like, no, nope. (laughs) There's always, 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 always going to be something that's going to make you be freaking out. Even me right now, like I still have, I still have before every single job, I get this massive amount of anxiety. What if they don't like my work? What if I don't know what I'm doing? What if I suddenly wake up and forget how to paint? And it's it's dumb. I'm (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> it's so dumb <laughs> and I ultimately um basically like every job that I drive to I think that there's a part of my brain that's just screaming the entire time until I get there and then I'm like it's fine we're fine we're just fine we're just gonna do it just do it <laughs> really oh my god yeah. <laughs> that's so funny because I was just talking to Samantha and she has that and I yeah. was like I was like it, it'll go away but I'm like maybe it won't <laughs> that's yeah okay. no and I sit there and I'm like I don't what if I don't know? Or what if I got the wrong colors? Or what if I forget something? Or what if it just bleh, 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 all the way down? And that no, that I don't think that'll ever go away for me. Even I just kind of like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like little crazy Lissa over here. You're fine. Oh, You'll be fine. Just, you okay. Know. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> you are disciplined in that you have these thoughts, but you've had so many thoughts. So your whole life of all these crazy things, but you just do it anyway. You do it scared. You do it worried. You do it anxious. You just do it mm-hmm. anyway. So you're just, you're not really trying to get over it. You're just doing it with it. You're like, whatever. In spite yeah, yeah. of. Yeah. In spite I of. Okay. In spite of. In spite of any intrusive thought that I could possibly have. I just, go for it. 
And then it's, I think a lot of us, maybe, or at least those of us who do suffer from that kind of anxiety thing beforehand, once you get into the painting and you've had some time to listen to your music and get messy, then you're like, oh, okay. Like, I live for this. Of course, I know. Just do it. Just do it. Don't make excuses. The only person that can keep you from getting to where you want is you. Yeah. Just you. Just so you. True. Like, you, your fear, your anxiety, your excuses. All of that is excuses. So I just flick them flick them away far far away <laughs> that's so true yeah the only person keeping you and the only person that will get you there too like it's just totally up to you <laughs> yep yep and you and decide how it. much work you're putting in and when you're putting it in and when you're not putting it in everybody's a different person and everybody's got a different journey so I guess my only other thing of advice would be don't compare yourself to other artists like just don't <laughs> I know we all do it. We're all guilty of doing it, but don't do it. There's nothing good that comes out of there unless you can look at it and be like, I want to get to where this person is. How did they do it? Follow their advice and try to follow. And, and their steps are going to be a little different because you're not the same person, but go for it. Yeah. And don't compare yourself to them. Because I did that a couple years ago. I was comparing myself to artists like yourself and my friend Diane and all of these other people. And I'm like, why are they so much better? And I don't understand. And I was like, oh, they're all like five, 10 years younger than me and they don't have kids and they can do <laughs> everything a million miles an hour. And I cannot. <laughs> and I was like, so you're fine. Like, just don't compare yourself to other artists and then just do it. Fall off the mountain. It'll be fine. Fall off the mountain. Yeah. And Christine <laughs> just commented. So Chris, we just did Christine's interview for the quit your day job just a little bit ago. And so she just commented, she said, yeah, same mad, mad anxiety until I start painting. I wonder how common that is for, we should ask everybody in the group, like how many of you have mad anxiety until you start? Like, yeah, probably do. So really? Oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> I think I maybe used to. Not really, though. I no. don't know. I was more like just excited and I was like, yeah, I'll just figure it out. Things go wrong all the time. And I'm just like, okay, anyway. So I'm, just <laughs> like, I'm not like worried that they will. I just know they will. So it's like, yeah. It's, it's yeah. Just, you just hop right over it. I feel like you see that hurdle come and you're just like, nope. <laughs> yeah <fine>. nope. avoid <laughs> yeah. yes we're too okay. many of us are like there's a fence oh my gosh do you see it there it's gonna be a problem oh but, yeah okay yeah I can see that yeah I'm gonna post yeah. that in the group and we'll create a discussion around it and maybe <laughs> make some people feel better so yeah I have this one last question for you so I'm creating a book type document thing and it's gonna be about creating like basically helping muralists in the beginning go from zero to 100 kind of a thing and is there anything that you have heard me say or heard somebody say on the podcast or any kind of mm. bit of advice that needs to be in this book like something that a beginner muralist somebody maybe even just considering being a muralist needs to hear oh the only thing that's coming to my brain is something that my mentor here in florida told me years ago and it was paint every day Oh yeah. Paint okay, every great. day. Paint every single day. Every day. Doesn't matter if it's for 10 minutes or 10 hours, but paint every single day. You cannot get better if you don't put in the work and you can't build the confidence without spending the time on it. So paint every single day. And then I guess other than that, the other thing that stands out really well is I think that literally every artist on the planet should read Big Magic. Oof. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like... Big Magic, and if you haven't heard about that book, it's all about harnessing your fear and embracing your fear to turn it into creativity. Paint every day, read Big Magic. <laughs> okay, perfect. Listen, yeah, listen to Big Magic while you're painting every day. <laughs> like, yes. On repeat. Yes. I, I listen to that book like once a year, probably. Yeah. It's I, just I, so I good. I listened to it a handful of times, and I bought a paper copy of it, um, which I read in the pool, and re-highlight different places. It's got like a rainbow of colors in it now because I highlight like what stands out or what I'm having problems with in that moment. So yeah, I think it's a really, really good book, especially if you apply it to everything that you're teaching people. Like it's, it's like magic thing. You should get to meet her someday. I feel like if you met Elizabeth Gilbert, you're, you would just. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. One day I'm going to put that on my vision board. Meet Elizabeth Gilbert. <laughs> 
Oh, awesome. Okay. Thank you so much. I think this is so inspiring. Thank you so much for taking the time out of your mural, super busy now mural career yeah. days of the summer, <laughs> which is so awesome. Busy is good. Busy is busy good. Busy is good. I'm storing away so that I can take some deserved famine time. Like I said, feast or famine. Yeah. Yeah. It is. Yeah. Awesome. Definitely. I hope you have a great rest of your day. Thank you so much. We'll be in touch. Absolutely. Thanks so much. Bye. 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 <laughs> I hope you have enjoyed this episode of the Artist Academy podcast, and I hope it has inspired you to take action towards going full-time in your own art business. And if you need a little extra help, then check out the mural training over at artistacademy.co. That's artistacademy.co, and you'll get all the help you need to start building the mural career of your dreams. If you like this episode or any past episodes, can you pretty please go leave a review? It really helps. And if you screenshot that review and send it to me via Instagram DM or email or however, I will say thank you. And I will shout you out on my Instagram of over 70k viewers. Help me help you. Thanks so much. I will see you next week.